Do you ever feel like it's overwhelming the number of different business class and first class airlines out there? So many options, different types of lie flat seats, different levels of service and food and drink on board. Where do you even start? Well, to help you out in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my personal rankings of all of the world's best business class airlines based entirely off of personal experience. I've personally flown in all of these business class seats, almost always using points to fly for a fraction of the price. And so in this video, I'm gonna rank all of these different business class experiences and show you which ones are gonna be worth going out of your way to experience and which ones are probably best avoided and maybe you'd rather even just fly in economy. Just kidding, it's probably still gonna be better than economy. Now first, let's lay some ground rules for the different criteria I'm gonna be using to assess all of these business class products. There's a whole bunch of different ways to compare them, so which factors are the most important? Well, let's start with the accessibility of booking this flight in business class, whether that's a cheap cash fare or most commonly, the ability to use points to redeem for this business class flight. Some airlines make it easier than others and so if it's easier to use points for this business class, it's gonna have a higher ranking than if it's really difficult. Number two, we'll be taking into account the ground experience. This is a huge part about the business class experience. It's the anticipation of boarding the flight, spending time in the lounge, enjoying some food and drink, maybe sipping some champagne. Number three, once we board the plane, once we enter that swanky business class cabin, we're gonna be considering the hard product. And this is a term, hard product. It means the actual physical bones of the seat itself, as well as the cabin and the overall look and feel. Number four, of course, after hard product is gonna be the soft product. This is another technical term within the aviation space. This refers to everything about the business class flying experience that's not the physical bones of the seat, but rather it's all about things like the quality of the onboard food and drink, the service, how well the flight attendants make you feel like you're really being pampered as part of the business class experience. And these are overall the four factors we're going to be taking into consideration. And let's start with a business class product that many of us may be very experienced in flying, and that's of course Air Canada Business Class. I myself live in Canada, much of our audience does as well. Well, Air Canada business class is a very common way to get around. It's generally gonna be one of the better ways to fly domestic business class, but internationally when it comes to using Aeroplan points, it's actually really difficult because oftentimes there's what's known as dynamic pricing. It's gonna cost an arm and a leg to book Air Canada business class. And then now when we think about the ground experience, if you have a paid business class ticket, you get access to the very nice signature suites in Toronto or Vancouver. But if you're redeeming points, you won't get access and you'll get to the pretty average Maple Leaf lounges. And then when you consider the seat itself, which is a pretty standard reverse herringbone Fair, nice enough, comfortable, nothing too special, and the soft product often leaves a little bit to be desired in terms of the food and the service compared to many of the world's better business class out there. Overall, I'm gonna take Air Canada Business Class, I'm gonna put it as a C. Next, let's go for a foreign airline, Air France. This is an airline that's been stepping up its business class in recent years. Now, if we're talking hard product and soft product, both of these have been recently refreshed, and in fact, the hard product, the seat itself, there's a new Air France Business Class seat on the Boeing 777s and the Airbus A350s, and the bulkhead rows at the very front of the cabin are extremely spacious. In fact, they're some of the most spacious in the entire industry. So Air France scoring high marks on the hard product. The soft product, the food and service has also been improving in recent years. I've always found the food on board Air France to be quite impressive. Ground experience in Paris, definitely one of the world's better business class lounges. And in terms of the accessibility of booking on points, well, Air France is one of the programs that have recently lowered their award costs for business class flights. You can now book in for only 50,000 Air France KLM flying blue miles, one way from North America to Europe. In terms of a loyalty program making things more favorable rather than less, that's certainly a win. And so I'm gonna put Air France business class squarely in the B category. Now let's do another foreign fan favorite. That's gonna be Turkish Airlines based out of Istanbul. This is actually the airline that flies to more countries than any other airline in the world. If you wanna fly from Mogadishu to Kathmandu in one single itinerary, then Turkish Airlines is gonna get you there. Along the way, you're gonna have some very nice seats on the Boeing Dreamliners and the Airbus A350s. There's these really nice private pods that you'll have access to. The soft product is where Turkish Airlines really shines in terms of the onboard food, it's always a treat. And plus you've also got the onboard head chef and the soft product doesn't even stop on the flight itself because once you land in Istanbul, that's home to one of the world's best business class lounges. It's the famous Turkish Airlines business class lounge. It's got cooking stations, it's got a golf simulator, it's got a race track for the kids to play around. It's got private sleeping rooms if your layover is of a certain duration. Let's talk about how easy it is to book on points. The good news is it's typically pretty accessible and you can book using points like Aeroplan or Avianca Life Miles. I'm gonna put it in the B category, probably towards leaning towards an A, but not quite. Next up, let's talk about Finnair based out of Helsinki. This is an airline that's made some waves in the business class world as of late, especially because of its unique hard product. Let's talk a little bit about this Finnair business class seat on the Airbus A350. Well, Finnair doesn't technically have the seat that becomes life flat. Instead, it's just a seat. And then you've got a few pieces of the seat that fold out from underneath and creates a life flat surface. And so it's quite an interesting phenomenon. And in terms of the overall comfort of this seat that doesn't 
doesn't recline. I gave it a try. I still felt it was okay in terms of being able to lie down. But if we factor in the soft product and the ground experience, those are both pretty strong. There's a pretty strong drink menu, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and I enjoyed my meal on board Finnair as well. And then when you're on the ground in Helsinki, there's a pretty nice lounge for business class flyers. And if you're a Finnair Elite member or a One World Emerald member, you'll even get access to the Finnair Platinum Wing, which comes with a very unique sauna feature. And so Finnair Business Class, I'll take that overall package, probably put it in the B category. Now let's do KLM, the beloved Dutch business class airline with those cute Dutch blue houses. KLM has recently refreshed its business class here and there. You'll find new business class seats on board the Boeing Dreamliners and the Boeing 777s as well. However, compared to Air France, which has gone in a more premium direction, KLM's kept things a little bit more simple. You typically won't find the same kind of wine list or the elaborate meal presentations. Instead, it's kept the menu a fair bit simpler. The food and drinks are still pretty strong, but it can be a little bit hit or miss at times. Of course, the best thing about KLM, it's not the Crown Lounge in Amsterdam, which is very nice. It's not the fact that you can book KLM business class for 50,000 miles, just like you can with Air France. It's gotta be those collectible Dutch Delft blue houses that have gin inside. It makes for a really fun treat to fly KLM and collect one of these every time. But overall, I'll put KLM probably towards the higher end of the C category, maybe a few more tweaks here and there, a few more improvements, and we can see it climb up the ranks over the next few years. All right, now let's wrap up the European airlines that we're talking about, and then we'll move on to other geographies. So I wanna talk about three airlines that are actually part of the same family, and that's gonna be Lufthansa, Swiss, and Austria. So these airlines are all part of the Lufthansa group, and they all share back-end operations amongst their bases across Frankfurt and Munich and Zurich and Geneva and Vienna. And when it comes to the flying experience, I tend to think of these three airlines as a monolith as well. I tend to think of them as pretty much interchangeable and nothing really too special at the end of the day. You can typically expect a nice lie flat business class seat that will get the job done for your transatlantic flight, but probably it's not gonna be too much in the throes of luxury beyond just having the lie flat function. In terms of the ground experience at any of their hubs, you'll have a pretty uniform experience Lots of beer and bread, given that this is Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, but then also some hot food that you can probably enjoy before your flight. The soft product on board, again, pretty similar, and the service is going to be friendly on a good day, lukewarm on a bad day, nothing too special at the end of the day. There's a few soft product elements to look out for that set some of these airlines apart. For example, in Austrian, you can look out for a specialty coffee menu with all sorts of different specialty Viennese coffees and iced coffees that you can order on your business class flights, but otherwise, I tend to think of them as pretty similar. Overall, the good thing about these airlines is that you can pretty reliably book them for your transatlantic flight over to Europe using Star Alliance miles of some kind like Aeroplan or Avianca Life miles. And if I were to put them into the categories, I'd put Swiss in the D category, I'd put Austrian, probably bump it up to a C thanks to that specialty coffee menu. And for Lufthansa, before this year, I would have put it squarely in the D category because I found it uninspiring and the business class seats, there's still two, two, two configurations, which is pretty terrible, honestly. But as of this year, Lufthansa has finally introduced their new Lufthansa Allegra's business class, which I recently flew and had a great experience. And so for that new business class seat type alone, let's pop it up to a C. Okay, I bet you're wondering when we're gonna get to talk about all the super fun airlines, the ones based out of the Middle East and Asia, the ones with the blinged out interiors and the matcha milk tea on board. That's gonna come later, okay? For now, please indulge me as we talk about airlines from other countries that are also super well known for being at the very cutting edge of aviation. And that's of course, the United States and the United Kingdom. Let's talk about these four business classes, okay? United Polaris, Delta One, British Airways business class and the club suites in particular, and Virgin Atlantic business class and the upper class product in particular. You may have detected that I was being sarcastic and I'm guilty as charged. United Polaris, the seat itself is probably the best thing about it because it's overall a pretty nice configuration. When it comes to the onboard food, besides that ice cream sundae, anything else that I've ever eaten on board United Polaris business class or anyone that I've known has eaten on board United Polaris business class has been very very, very poor to say the least. Now, Delta One actually gave me a much nicer dining experience, so I'd say that Delta's food probably ranks superior to United. And when it comes to the ground experience, to be fair, both United and Delta have stepped things up over the past decade or so. You'll now find very nice business class lounges called Polaris lounges or Delta One lounges, specifically for business class passengers. There's a la carte dining, there's shower rooms and nap rooms. It's generally gonna be a really nice space. The problem is it typically tends to be very crowded, but that's a difficult problem to solve. Over across the pond, I've generally generally had pretty similar experiences with British Airways and Virgin Atlantic. They've both been serviceable and acceptable, but nothing too special that really blew my socks off. The food on 
British Airways was not a whole lot to write home about. I definitely enjoyed the Virgin Atlantic food and drink a lot more. And plus on Virgin Atlantic, there's also the really fun onboard features like the loft relaxation area or the retreat suites on their new Airbus A330 900 Neos. The ground experience too, the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse in London Heathrow is definitely a bucket list item that's well worth checking out. It's got a really nice terrace with very nice plane spotting that you can enjoy a drink and watch all the planes. In terms of the ability to book on points, I would say these four airlines are good, terrible, okay and okay in general. United Airlines generally has pretty favorable availability and minimal fees when it comes to business class. Delta One is pretty notoriously difficult to book using Delta Sky Miles. The prices are really gonna be sky high because of the dynamic pricing with that program. And BA and Virgin Atlantic both offer a fixed amount of business class seats that are available for its customers to book. You can typically have access, but the surcharges are gonna be very high. So once we take these four airlines in totality, I'm gonna to give them scores of D, 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 and B. All right, let's now move on to the Middle Eastern Airlines. We'll start with two of the Middle Eastern Airlines that have historically been underrated, Oman Air and Gulf Air, based out of the Sultanate of Oman and the Kingdom of Bahrain, respectively. Now, these airlines actually have very similar looking business class products. It's the Apex Suites, which is 222 across, but for the window seats, there's a little walkway that gives you access to the aisle, and so it's extremely private and one of the world's leading business class seat types. When it comes to the soft product, the food and drink can be said to be very strong on both Gulf Air and Oman Air, I'd probably say that Oman Air's food and drink is a little bit better in terms of the overall taste, but Gulf Air isn't half bad either. And likewise, the service, both of these airlines will generally have crews hailing from all over the world. They've typically got a friendly face, very good service attitudes, and I really enjoyed my flights on both of these airlines. Throw in the strong ground experience on the ground in both Muscat and Manama respectively, as well as the fact that both of these airlines are accessible through Aeroplan points. They're among the more unique airline partners that Aeroplan offers, plus the fact that they both routinely make a lot of award space available between their hubs in the Middle East and their destinations in Europe and Southeast Asia. And both of these airlines earn very respectable rankings. Gulf Air, I'm gonna put it in category C, and Oman Air, I'll pop it in category B for its superior food. And that, of course, brings us to the kingpins of the Middle Eastern Airlines, also known as the Middle Eastern Three. And that's, of course, the three very famous world-class airlines called Emirates, Etihad Airways, and Qatar Airways. Now, I wonder where on the list these three airlines are gonna end up, and the answer may surprise surprise you, but first, one thing to note is if you're flying Emirates or Etihad Airways en route to the United Arab Emirates, and when you get on the ground, you're trying to make a call via select services like WhatsApp calls or FaceTime, you'll actually find that it's blocked in the UAE. And so the only way you're gonna be able to make a FaceTime call when you're in the UAE is by using the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN, which is a VPN service that helps you get around local internet restrictions and browse the internet as though you were back home or as though you're in any one of the 111 countries in which NordVPN's 6,400 plus servers are found. Now, NordVPN is trusted by millions of worldwide users and it offers top-notch privacy and performance no matter where you are. With NordVPN, you can protect your private information and access content from around the globe with just a few clicks. At Prince of Travel, we love NordVPN's enhanced encryption technology that ensures our data is safe from any prying eyes, while their easy-to-use app makes it a seamless experience to log on and browse securely from anywhere in the world. Plus, with NordVPN's smart DNS feature, you can bypass the local geo restrictions but still have access to the local deals that wouldn't be available if you are actually outside of the country. Things like flight deals that are particular to a certain geography or point of sale, that's a great example of something that you can use the smart DNS feature to access even while you're browsing securely using a server from a country outside of where you currently are. Now here's the exciting part. For a limited time, we'll show you how you can get up to 74% off a two-year plan plus four extra months using our coupon code. Use the code Prince of Travel upon checkout as you sign up for NordVPN and give the service a try. Follow the link in the description use the code Prince of Travel and get 74% off a two-year deal plus four extra months of NordVPN while you're at it. And thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Now where Emirates falls on this list of world's best business class rankings might actually surprise you because you've probably seen Emirates's blinged out first class cabin with the caviar and champagne and the shower in the sky. But keep in mind, that's first class, which is different from business class. Business class for Emirates, you gotta say, is a little bit underwhelming after you factor in all the first class hype. Now to understand why it's under Overwhelming, you just gotta look at the first class seat map. I mean, on the Airbus A380s, at least it's still a one to one configuration with aisle access from every seat. But as soon as you get to the Boeing 777s, which are actually a significant portion of Emirates' long haul fleet, you'll notice a problem. There's a 232 configuration, which means that there's a middle seat in most of the business class cabin. And so if you're not careful about which seat that you assign yourself when you're flying Emirates business class, you might end up stuck between two other passengers and having to 
step over them to go to the bathroom, which is pretty much unheard of in modern day business class cabins in 2024. Now, of course, the onboard food is pretty good, you know, not necessarily world class, but definitely better than a whole bunch of other business class airlines on this list. And on the ground in Dubai, you've got a giant business class lounge with lots of different seating areas and buffet dining options that will definitely keep you occupied for the duration of your layover. Plus, when it comes to redeeming on points, if you use Emirates' Skywards program, it's generally pretty accessible to book business class. It's really difficult to get over that middle seat in business class on the Boeing 777. Then again, on the Airbus A380, you've got a nice business class seat and you've got that bar in the back. Overall, it's definitely a little bit of a mixed bag. I'm gonna give Emirates business class a B ranking and I'd say that's pretty fair. Now, if we're to move from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, we have Etihad Airways. And this is an airline that suffers some of the similar problems as Emirates in terms of it's an airline with a huge reputation thanks to its first class apartments and the residence product. But when it comes to business class, it's a little bit more pedestrian. There's a few different business class products available with Etihad. There's the business studio on the Dreamliner or the new Etihad business class product that you'll find on the Airbus A350. I flew this a couple of years ago. It was a really nice time. The soft product is really strong as well. Again, crews from all over the world, very enthusiastic in their service, very friendly and warm. And the food and drink, I'd say it's actually a notch above Emirates in terms of the quality. Plus they've recently opened a brand new lounge at the new Abu Dhabi International Airport as well. When it comes to redeeming on points though, Etihad has taken a few steps back in recent years. There used to be a very strong partnership with Aeroplan with lots of possibilities of redeeming Aeroplan points for Etihad business and first, but that partnership seems to have gone in some mysterious direction where most Etihad business and first redemptions are no longer available. So these days, the best way to book is either through American Airlines Advantage or through Etihad Guest, neither of which is really the easiest program to earn points in. Overall, if I were to think about Etihad business class, I'd say it's definitely up there in terms of quality, but lacking that little extra edge to really take it to the very top of the game. And so for that reason, I'll put it as a category B. Well, is anything gonna be able to crack this category A? Let's find out with our next airline that we'll be talking about, and that's of course the world famous Qatar Airways Q Suites. This is a business class product that we've talked about many times at length on this channel. It's offered by Qatar Airways based out of Doha with a very extensive route network traveling all the way across Asia, Australia, Africa, South America, Europe, and many cities in North America, including Montreal and soon Toronto in Canada as well. What more is there to say about Qatar Airways Q Suites that we haven't said already? I mean, think about the seat itself. It's definitely among the world's leading business class seats. It's got all sorts of different features that make it very ergonomic and comfortable for your long haul flight over to the Middle East. And when you put the seats in lie flat mode, it's almost like a double bed in the sky. Don't get any funny ideas, I said almost, your feet are still separated by a divider. Now, if you're traveling as a group of four, say a family or a group of friends, you can get together in what's known as the quad in the middle of the plane, and you can bring down the walls and slide them around so that you have a shared communal dining experience, a meeting of the minds in the sky or something like that. Now, if the hard product, the seat in the cabin were one of the world's best, the soft product definitely takes it up a notch even further. You get what's known as dine on demand with Qatar Airways Q-Switch, which means as soon as you board, you can start eating, or you can wait until later in the flight to have your meal instead. Once you do, you can order anything off the menu, any time off the menu that you want, and really you can just basically eat breakfast at dinner time or lunch at breakfast time or whatever it is that you want, you can enjoy. Now on the ground in Doha, the experience goes up a few levels even more. That's because there's not one, but two business class lounges for you to enjoy, and they're both absolutely gigantic. There's all sorts of different seating areas, nooks and crannies that seem to go on forever, business centers, play areas areas, game rooms, gyms and spas, dining areas where you can sit down and order from a menu. Doha's Hamad International Airport is one place where that's definitely worthwhile. And the best part about Q Suites is the last factor when we consider the business class rankings, and that's the ease of accessibility, the ease of booking into Q Suites. It's actually one of the easier business class products to book these days with how accessible Qatar Airways Avios and British Airways Avios are in terms of how easy it is to earn those points. There's so many credit cards across Canada and the US that you can use to rack up the Avios and you can transfer it at a one-to-one -one ratio between British Airways and Qatar Airways. And once you have those Qatar Airways AVOs, you can redeem as little as 70,000 AVOs one way for that Q Suites flight from North America to the Middle East. And if you wanna continue onwards to other points in the Middle East or Southeast Asia or Africa, it's typically only a handful more AVOs, you know, possibly 80,000 or 90,000, 95,000 to get you to your final destination. After all these airlines that we've talked about, I'm happy to say we finally have an airline that's cracked the top category. And so drum roll please, the airline that makes to the very top category of our rankings list is gonna be Qatar Airways Q Suites, which makes it into the S tier
tier instead of the A tier. Apparently there's an S tier that goes above the A tier. I don't really understand why. If you know why there's an S tier with all of these tier list things, let me know in the comments. I'll be curious to find out. But as we now turn our attention over to East Asia and think about all the airlines that are still there, that does still leave the question, are there any other airlines that can crack the A tier or even the S tier? Let's wait and find out. For now, let's take a brief detour from the Middle East over to the continent of Africa. Number one is going to be Ethiopian Airlines. Now this might not be everybody's first choice airline to fly, but if you're heading to Africa, chances are Ethiopian is going to be one of the best airlines that you can fly with in terms of the overall routes and connectivity to where you want to go. The seats tend to be lie flat and gets the job done for what it is, and the food is going to be, you know, nothing out of this world. The lounge in Addis Ababa is also pretty good for a quick layover, and there's also a very convenient transit hotel that you can use if you have an extended layover in the Ethiopian capital. And in fact, if you're a business class passenger, you might even be able to get that transit hotel for free. Plus, when you throw in the fact that Ethiopian generally has very strong award availability for you to book on points, as well as the fact that they have a few nifty fifth freedom routings in different parts of the world outside of Africa that can really help you get out of a tight spot as you're planning some cool routings in different parts of the world, like Seoul to Tokyo, for example, or Oslo to Stockholm, or even Buenos Aires to Sao Paulo. Add in all these nifty little factors, and I'll give Ethiopian a respectable D grade in our ranking. Now, the other African airline that's worth mentioning, or maybe not, is Egypt Air. Okay, I'm gonna put Egypt Air in the F category because of a number of reasons. Number one, it's a dry airline, no alcohol is served on board. That in itself is fine, but everything else about the airline is still chaotic in the extreme. The boarding process, the lounge on the ground in Cairo, the business class product itself is generally leaves a lot to be desired. This is the one airline that people will be telling you, it's probably not worth your points. You'd rather save the points for a different business class flight. So if you have to fly Egypt Air, you might just wanna consider booking a cash fare and economy and getting it over with. For me, Egypt Air, it's an F. All right, at long last, let's head over to East Asia, which is widely known as the part of the world with the best airlines. An airline that may not necessarily come to mind as among the world's best, and that's Thai Airways. Now, I flew Thai Airways business class a little while back, and frankly, I was a little bit underwhelmed because I had mentally grouped it with all the Asian airlines, but it didn't quite live up to the full billing in terms of the overall experience. There were some highlights, like the selection of Thai drinks and the Thai milk tea, and the cruise service was generally quite warm and well-intentioned. But overall, I thought the quality of the food just wasn't quite there, and the hard product itself, the seat, it just wasn't quite as cutting edge as some of its peers. And so overall, Thai Airways, you can still access it pretty easily for the short-haul regional flights and the long-haul flights to Europe by using a Star Alliance mileage program like Aeroplan. But if I had to put it into a category, I'd probably give it a C at best. Now let's turn our attention elsewhere in Southeast Asia to one of the top names in global aviation when it comes to business classes class, Singapore Airlines has to be up there. Well, let's take a look at the details because they might just surprise you. The suites and first class products are very strong. When it comes to business class, the book the cook service in which you get to choose from over 50 different meal selections when departing Singapore and selecting your meal in advance, plus the very strong ground experience, the lounge offerings in Singapore. The problem with Singapore Airlines comes in the form of its fleet consistency and what types of seat that you can expect on board business class, and in particular on the A350s and A380s that are used for long haul flights, most of the seats actually have the footwell in a diagonally offset position that can actually make it quite difficult and quite uncomfortable to sleep. If you're lucky enough to secure the seats at the bulkhead of the cabin, which is the first row of business class, then you won't have a problem because you have lots of leg room both at the front and diagonally on the side. But if you're in any of the other seats, then your footwell is really only diagonally to the side and that can become a bit of a problem on those longer haul journeys. Now when you factor in all of the good things that Singapore Airlines has going for it, the unmistakably friendly service, the book The Cook, and the fact that you can use Singapore Chris Flyer Miles to book Singapore Airlines business class pretty accessibly. I'm still going to put it in that category A that's befitting of one of the world's best airlines. Now let's pop up from Singapore to Hong Kong and talk about another airline that's widely considered among the world's best, and that's Cathay Pacific. Well, on the ground in Hong Kong, you can expect a very nice experience in one of Cathay Pacific's lounges. There's not one, not two, but three different business class lounges that you can visit. And here's the thing I'll say about Cathay Pacific's business class lounges. They're generally the same uniform, consistent, excellent experience that you'll find at their business class lounges, whether it's in Hong Kong or elsewhere in the world. That's right, whether it's London or Bangkok or Tokyo or Vancouver, wherever there is a Cathay Pacific business class lounge, you can expect high quality furniture, attentive service, and of course, the famous noodle bar with those made to order wonton soup noodles or dun dun mian available on the menu. When it comes to the in-flight experience though, Cathay Pacific, it has to be said, does seem to have taken just a few small steps back in recent years. 
the onboard food and drink offerings also seems to have taken a little bit of a step back and is no longer that world-class, very polished level that it once was. But overall, I take Catholic Pacific Business Class and I'll put it in category B. Still a very respectable showing, but one that's perhaps slid a little bit from its glory days. All right, now we're gonna talk about three different airlines that are all based out of Taipei, which is quickly becoming one of the world's greatest hubs for top quality airline products and aviation experiences. These are of course China Airlines, Eva Air, and the latest entrant into the market, which is known as Starlux Airlines. Well, let's start with the hard products and the seats. And in this particular arena, the three different airlines are pretty evenly matched. All all three airlines have their version of what's known as the reverse herringbone seating, which is the typical lie flat pod with the seats facing away and decent levels of privacy compared to the aisle. If you're flying Eva Air, you might just end up on their Dreamliner experience, which is not a reverse herringbone seat, but instead it's a staggered approach, one to one configuration. It's also a very comfortable ride and the interior design of that Eva Air Dreamliner seat is reminiscent of a luxury sports car, definitely up there with one of the most beautiful interiors that have ever come across on board business class cabins. If we talk ground experience in Taipei, to be honest, all three of these airlines are pretty strong, but none of them are going to such a distance to blow the competition out of the water. Typically, you've got some Taiwan specialties like bubble tea and beef noodle soup. Beyond that, you've got some comfortable seating and branding and design specific to the airline like the calligraphy in China Airlines' as business class or the spaceship-like designs with Eva Air or Starlux. I don't know why, but both Eva Air and Starlux are really huge on the spaceship intergalactic type of designs. It's, uh, it's a little bit freaky if you're flying these airlines for the first time, but also adds to the fun. In terms of booking on points, all three of these airlines are great candidates for trans-Pacific flights that you wanna book on points to unlock for a fraction of the price. For China Airlines, you wanna use Flying Blue Miles. For Eva Air, any type of Star Alliance currency, Aeroplan comes to mind. If you're going for Starlux Airlines, it's probably gonna be the hardest, but the best way to book is through their partnership with Alaska Airlines. If you're lucky, you can find the lowest award space at 75,000 miles one way, and that's gonna be the best way to fly between Taipei and the West Coast, San Francisco, Los Angeles, or Seattle. But the one thing that sets apart these three airlines from the rest of the competition that we've talked about is gonna be the soft product. And in particular, the food and drink is gonna be really, really good, but the service is where these airlines really stand out. And when I talk about these airlines, I'm really gonna be focusing specifically on Eva Air and Starlux. China Airlines, very respectable, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite at the same level as the other two. And so I'm gonna put China Airlines in the B category and you know what? I'm finally gonna put a few airlines in this coveted A category. It's gonna be both Eva and Starlux going in right here. And last but not least, after we've wrapped up stuff in Taipei, let's head north to Japan and talk about the two heavyweight airlines based out of Japan that everybody seems to be obsessing over these days. And that's of course, ANA All Nippon Airways or Japan Airlines. In terms of the hard product, both of these airlines have rolled out new business class seats in recent years. ANA released their new The Room business class seat in around 2019, 2020. It's been a fan favorite ever since. This is definitely one of the world's largest business class seats. It even rivals Q Suites in terms of the overall amount of space available. You can close the door and have a very nice amount of privacy to yourself. Now, Japan Airlines recently rolled out their new business class as of 2024, and it likewise looks like a top-notch way to fly across the Pacific. I've yet to fly this product myself, but I took a peek at it upon walking past it on my recent Japan Airlines first class flight. If we're comparing these new business class seats, I'd say ANA's The Room is probably still superior. If we're looking back at the older business class seats for either of these airlines, I'd definitely say Japan Airlines with their Apex suites, with the window seats, with the little hallway that leads to the eye is the superior option compared to ANA, which is this kind of older style, staggered option. In terms of the soft product, both of these airlines are definitely known for their very strong food and drink offerings, especially if you're a fan of Japanese food. You'll have a blast experiencing the Japanese washoku menu, which is you know, a very nice Japanese set plate that's typically part of the lunch or dinner offering. And then you've got an all day dining menu, otherwise known as a snack menu, where you can typically browse through a series of rice bowl or ramen dishes. I highly recommend always getting the ramen when you're flying onboard Japanese airlines. Lounges wise, I'd say that both ANA and Japan Airlines are competitive in terms of the ground experiences they offer at both Narita and Haneda airports in Tokyo, and of course, the other airports across Japan as well. I'd probably give the edge to ANA because they've got a noodle bar in their lounges where you can get various types of udons and sobas and go back for seconds if you want. Japan Airlines is a little bit more low key with its business class lounge. There's not typically a noodle bar, but there's always gonna be some very nice food and drink offerings for you to dig into. But this is the thing, compared to some of the Middle Eastern Airlines or a few of the other Asian carriers like Cathay or Singapore, I'd say that the lounge experience, the ground experience, 
isn't actually the strong point of the Japanese airlines. It's typically the onboard food and drink and service that really shines when it comes to these airlines from Japan. And lastly, of course, let's talk about booking Japan Airlines business class and ANA using miles and points. And this is where, you know, everybody wants to go to Japan and fly in business class. So it's not gonna be easy, especially these days after the pandemic, when travel demand to Japan seems to have skyrocketed. You'll wanna look either way out in advance or during the last few days before departure for the best odds of snagging Japan Airlines or ANA business class seats. It's really unfortunate, but it's typically one extreme or the other, planning way out in advance or planning super last minute to give you the best odds of success here. When you factor in the overall package, it's hard to put Japan Airlines and ANA anywhere else besides the A tier of world-class airlines that are really among the world's best, and there you have it. That's my tier list of airline business class products around the world. It is Qatar Airways Q Suites that comes out on top in this coveted S tier at the very top. If you have any thoughts of your own, do let me know in the comments below where you'd rank the airlines, how you would rank them differently, and if you agree or disagree with the way that I've ranked them in this tier list. And if you want to learn how to maximize your points to be able to fly Qatar Airways Q Suites at a fraction of the price, make sure to join us in this video next. I'll see you in that video.